Hey all, I hope everybody's keeping well. This is the first video that I've posted now in over a week and that's due to the fact that I return back to work. Uh, here in Spain the restrictions have been slightly lifted in terms of the coronavirus, COVID-19. And if you are self-employed, autonomous, you are allowed to return back to work as long as you're not working in a residential building, a block of apartments, for example. So I've been working on a Finca uh, farmhouse and I've been working renovating the loft. So I've been working in isolation. And when I have had to leave to go to buy materials at the builders merchants, I've been wearing gloves and a mask and then disposing of those accordingly. It's a difficult time here in Spain as the self-employed don't really get looked after very well. So you've got to do what you've got to do. I've got a family of five and I have to make ends meet. So I need to get out there and I need to earn a crust. Now, um, if you are a farmer, and you own a field like this ploughed one here and you also own vineyards um, you are allowed to work because you're in isolation and you're not affecting anybody else so a friend of mine owns this field he's got some almond trees and olive trees here and uh, also these vineyards that you can see across the road there and, and in the distance and um, the field has just recently been ploughed but it's not yet been seeded so he's given me the permission to come here and to have a detect I'm in isolation so I'm not going to get in trouble for, for doing this I'm with Mr Peeps as always we're out for a bit of a stroll so um, yeah we're going to have a detect and see if we can find anything it is, a, it is a bit of a way out, it's in the sticks, you can see over there the, the mountains, that's Ellsport's Natural Park. Um, we're right on the border of Ellsport's Natural Park and uh, yeah we're about maybe 10 kilometres away from the nearest village so whether there, will, whether there will be anything in this field or not is another story but um, let's get on with it and see if we can find anything. So I'm a bit surprised, I've literally only just started and I've got a signal in the 80s. So first signal and an old tin can of some description, oil canister or something. Okay, so on to the next. So another signal and this one is just lay nestled on the surface. bullet casing so there has been some activity in this field hopefully we can find something a bit better peeps have I told you about chewing those you nutter so third signal and again it's popping out of the surface now I don't think that is a coin because it's too far too thick to be a coin. Ah. Oh, yep. Yeah. That's got some detail on it. Now what these were... Hey! Hey! Here! Here! Take that. Go on. Go and play with that. Go on. Go on. Peeps, it's not for you. That's for you. Go on. Sorry, yeah, what these are, are these are these are tags um, and they were used for merchandise. Rather like now when you go to the shop and you purchase something, usually it's a paper or cardboard tag attached to what you purchase. If it's an item of clothing or or something like that, you know, um, they'll, it'll have a tag on. Well, this is what these were, and I've been found, finding these all over the shop. Um, and yeah, I can't remember the technical name for them, but I'll post a little bit more in the video. Uh, but yeah, these are, these are like tags um, for merchandise. Another find on the surface. Peepo. What are you doing with it? Don't bite it. Give it here, give it here. Here, give it here. Peepo. Oh, he's broken it. I've, 
pot handle. Careful, you'll cut yourself, you nutter. Oi! Oi, what's this? What's this? Leave that alone. Go on, go and get that. Daft as a brush. Yeah. The handle of a teapot or something. Let's see where it was. It's not there. Before Peepo got his, his jaws on it. in tracks here I'm going to detect as I walk and film them like one foot in front of the other very weird I mean what animal walks on just two feet look these are pretty big Ah, uh, look, see from that one, that is a large wild boar. You can see the two hooves. Poof, that would have been a monster. You can see, like, just look at it in comparison to the size of my foot. That is a big wild boar. They go off and then across into the vineyard. <whistles> you don't want that thing chasing your peeps. I was buzzing with this new permission to detect this ploughed field and I've been here now for the best part of five hours going up and down following the ploughed lines. I've probably only had around about 10 signals, dug 10 holes, nine of those being scrap metal and one being the lead seal, the tag that I found on the perimeter over there when I first started. So it's not been great at all. Lux can be deceiving. Um, I'm getting a bit bored now. It's really hot and the sun's beating down and I'm getting sunburnt. So I'm going to leave here, find a new location, and see if I can find anything decent. Just on my way to a new, to find a new metal detecting location. And I've driven past this uh, strange looking object. Up against Is there any snakes or anything. This is bizarre. I can get through this way. Well, I 
have no idea what that was. Judging by the bars at the top, I'd say, hang on a minute. Oh, look. <laughs> no way. <laughs> that is random. I wonder what that was used for. It's pretty interesting. So I would say <clears throat> that this uh, this chute was used for quarrying this stone. You can see how the, the cliff face has been worked there. And I would say that, yeah, they, uh, they used the same stone to build this actual structure. It's a similar color and all of these tiered section sections with walls, probably all from the same, the same cliff face quarried it and then sent it down that chute in buckets and out onto the road and uh, down to the nearest town to build houses as well. Is it sandstone? I say it'd have to be stronger than sandstone, wouldn't it? So another nice signal, we've dug the hole. We're getting a readings in the 80s, 81, 82. I can already see the object. That looks like a little, little bell. All the bugs there, these funny coloured bugs. But yeah. It's got some detail on there, look. Some rings there and around the bottom and then this part with a hole through it at the top so I would say that that is a cattle bell and that would hang around the cow's neck or the goat's neck whatever cattle it was attached to and as it moves the cattle it would it would ring Probably, Peepo, no, don't get, no, no. Go on. I would say that that was from around about the 1800s. It's got a lovely patina on it. Lovely patina. You can see inside it. The patina, how it's built up on it. Yeah, I'd say a cattle bell from around about the 1800s. Nice little find. So we have another signal. The hole is dug. It's out of the hole. It's reading in. In the, well, it's flicking between the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So let's see if we can find out what it is. coin by the looks of things see if you can see that
here. I would say that that is a Maravedi. There's some writing on there. Hang on a minute. Just zoom in a little bit. And it looks like there's a date down there. 17... 77? I would say that that was an eight Maravedis in the 1700s. It looks like 1787 or 1777. But, um, you can clearly see that it's a Maravedi from the pattern on that side. It's a bit damaged, a bit bent. Probably been hit with the, uh, the plow. That's a lovely looking coin. It's a nice find. Lovely patina on it. Okay. Oh yeah, that's lovely. Doesn't even really need cleaning up. Okay, so we have another signal, the hole is dug, and the signal is out of the hole. It's in the 50s. So, let's try and locate it. How many times am I going to drop it? I've seen this object off somewhat and you can clearly see that there's some writing on there and it says the salchichon which refers to sausages in Spanish. Now what this is, is a lead seal. And I know that because I've been researching this recently. I found a lot of these objects made out of lead and I was wondering what they are. This is a good example because it's intact. It still has the hole where it would have been attached to the merchandise. Um, and what they are is that they are merchandise tags. So rather like today when you purchase something, it comes with tags which tells you who the manufacturer is, where it was made, how much it weighs, what fabric it's made from, etc, etc. Well, this is the same thing, um, but obviously a lot older. Now, these date back to the Roman times, but this one obviously is a lot, uh, is a lot more modern than Roman times. Um, and if you flip it over, on the other side, it says Miguel Garriga who is obviously the manufacturer, and it says Barcelona below that. I don't know if you can make that out. Um, so this um, is obviously a merchandise tag from a sausage factory in Barcelona, or a butcher in Barcelona, for example. Ladybird.
So another hole dug and the signal is out in the 80s. Um, the wind's picking up so I'm not sure if you can hear me okay or not. Um, hopefully so. This metal detector, the Garrett 200i, is really beginning to frustrate me. It's an entry level detector. First one I've ever bought. I'm new to metal detecting. But the, the, the noise that it makes when uh, it picks up a signal is just ear piercing and, and rather frustrating. So I can't wait to be able to upgrade this machine and start using something that, uh, that uh, sounds a lot better than that. So anyway, let's see if we can find the signal. Now, normally a signal in the 80s uh, in this particular region, in this area, will be a bullet or a piece of shrapnel or a piece of uh, a mortar or something like that. You never know. Um, I did find a silver coin. Oh, there we go. Got it. Ah, oh, there you are. Look. Look at that. So that is a three-ring bullet dated to the Civil War, mid-18th century to late 18th century. You can see there it struck something when it's been fired. It seems in uh, in really good condition. Probably found about ten of these, and uh, people do collect these. They're sought after Civil War items, so that's a nice find. Better than uh, y your average bullet. A lot better, a bit more history to it. Um, but yeah, you have to dig everything because, like I say, the silver coin that I found dated back to the 1600s, Felipe the sixth. Um, that was also ringing in in the 80s. So sometimes uh, I've been known to leave 80 signals just due to the fact that there's so many bullets here and I get so fed, fed up of digging bullets. But um, since finding that silver coin, I dig every single signal and I think uh, that's what anybody who's new to metal detecting should do. Gives you a better idea of uh, of what objects are ringing in at um, at what numbers, and um, and yeah, you just never know what you're going to find. So that's a nice find. I'm happy with that. Three ring bullet, Civil War era. Uh, here's a good um, find to follow on from the three ring bullet. As I was saying, these bullets ring in in the 80s, and as you can see here. There you've got another Civil War bullet, not quite as old as the three ring bullet, um, a 303. But all these things, all these bullets ring in in the 80s, which is quite frustrating. Probably found over a hundred of these. When you first find them, you think, oh yeah, that's awesome, look at that, wow, yeah, Civil War era bullet, fantastic. But believe me, once you've found a hundred of them, uh, the novelty wears off and there's only so many that I can take home without the wife kicking off and, uh, and uh, chucking them in the bin so um, <laughs> even still I do like that one so I'll probably take that back with me seems to be quite in quite good condition but yeah there we go 303 more modern than the three ring but um, more bullets <laughs> <laughs>